I think you have an enormous amount of fear and uncertainty in this country. Millions of people who are in trouble today, they really are, they're confused, they're working longer hours for lower wages, they're seeing productivity going up, but their kids are worse off economically than they are. And then you have demagogues like Trump coming along. He says, I know what the cause of your problems is. Today, it is Muslims. You all remember how many years ago when we were younger? It was the uppity women who were trying to take our jobs as men. It was blacks who wanted to take white jobs. That's what demagoguery is about. It is to obfuscate the real problems facing our society and find somebody you can blame and rally the American people. That's what it is. It's the immigrants or the Muslims, and we got to take them on. The antidote is a very strong, progressive agenda that says, yes, I know that you're angry, but Muslims are not your enemy. Who is your enemy? What does it mean if 58% of all new income in America is going to the top 1%? That we have massive income and wealth inequality. You want decent jobs. You want your kids to have an opportunity. We're going to fight to give you that. Don't go to the dark side. It's not good enough to say that racism and xenophobia is bad. We've got to reach those people today who are so angry, who are so hateful, and say, yes, you have a right to be angry. Don't take it out on the Muslims. Work with us to create an agenda and a political movement that will make your life better, not just other people's life worse. When we stand together, when we do not allow the Donald Trumps of the world to divide us up, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. $27. I think it's the best $27 you could spend. It's the average donation given to Bernie Sanders. $27. To make college tuition free. For better care of our veterans. For women's rights. For health care for all. To make Wall Street corporations pay their fair share. To keep us out of unnecessary wars. To ensure a living wage. To get big money out of politics. For the poor. For the marginalized. For the rich. For all of us. Give 27 to transform America. I'm Bernie Sanders, and I approve this message. Wall Street banks shower Washington politicians with campaign contributions and speaking fees. And what do they get for it? A rigged economy, tax breaks and bailouts, all held in place by a corrupt campaign finance system. And while Washington politicians are paid over $200,000 an hour for speeches, they oppose raising the living wage to $15 an hour. $200,000 an hour for them, but not even 15 bucks an hour for all Americans. Enough is enough. I'm Bernie Sanders, and I approve this message. Most times when I'm stopped on the street, people recognize me for my work as an actor. But it was my work and activism that really brought me to acting. Growing up, I, I knew what segregation felt like when I visited my family in Georgia. We'd have to use separate bathrooms and drinking fountains. As a child, I was paying attention to the social movements that were fighting Jim Crow. I hoped to join them. In college, we initiated the longest campus strike in history to create the School of Ethnic Studies. And I became deeply involved in the struggle against apartheid. Often when we see change, there are certain events that precede those movements. 50 years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was pushing against all forms of oppression and building toward what he called a beloved community. When I saw Bernie Sanders getting arrested for protests and segregation, it was powerful. The presidential candidate that had put himself on the line to be on the right side of history. I think Bernie is one of us. I think Bernie is with us. I tried to follow in the footsteps of Dr. King and his transformation. He moved from being a traditional civil rights leader into a human rights leader as he began to organize the Poor People's Campaign where working class blacks, whites, Latinos, Asian Americans would come together around the agenda of economic justice. And that's what Bernie is trying to do today. Build an inclusive movement that makes this country work for all of us. That's why I support Bernie Sanders. I'm Bernie Sanders and I approve this message. Even when the deck is stacked, 
a New Yorker will find a way to break up big banks, create millions of jobs, and rebuild America. Some say it can't be done again, but another native son of New York is ready, Bernie. Rebuild the middle class, make Wall Street banks pay their fair share, give every child a chance. New York, it's our time again to build a future to believe in. I'm Bernie Sanders and I approve this message. When we go out to the rallies and we see all those faces out there full of hope, optimism for the future, commitment to, to affect change, you know, first it's exhilarating, but you walk away humbled. You know, we've always worked together really well, and it's the work that has brought us together. He's been an unbelievable partner, somebody I could always count on, uh, somebody our kids could always count on, and somebody that the people can count on. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, you know, it's, it's a privilege. I mean, to be married to somebody that you admire and respect more than anybody else. It's pretty good. last night the papal residence so did you meet with Pope Francis we did uh, we had the opportunity to meet with him this morning uh, he is on his way to Greece now but we did have the opportunity to chat with him can you describe for me what that meeting was like was it a private meeting what did you talk about well I don't want to go into all of the details but he was apologetic uh, that he was unable to come to the conference uh, last night where we were originally going to meet uh, because of uh, complications regarding his trip to Greece um, but I just conveyed to him my admiration for the extraordinary work that he is doing in raising some of the most important issues facing our planet and, and, and the billions of people on our planet, injecting the, the issue of the need for morality in a global economy where we have the top 1% now only more wealth than the bottom 99%, where we are moving in a suicidal direction in terms of climate change. He has been upfront on that. He is, his words are going well beyond the Catholic Church to, I think, the entire world's community, and that's just something which goes on. So what was it like to meet him in the flesh? What's he like personally? He's a beautiful man. He really is. There's a radiance. I, you know, I don't mean to overdo this. Uh, I'm not a Catholic, but he is a beautiful man, and there's a radiance that comes from him. It was a very, uh, very wonderful moment to meet him. It's the art of the steel, and it's hiding in plain sight. The ultra-rich employ an army of lobbyists to write tax policy to avoid paying their fair share. It's a part of the corrupt political system that keeps in place a rigged economy, where Wall Street buys off elections and stops meaningful oversight. Nothing will change until we elect candidates who reject Wall Street money. Send a message to Wall Street banks and the billionaires. Enough is enough. I'm Bernie Sanders, and I approve this message. The United States of America is the most powerful nation in the world. Yet, the way in which we treat many of our citizens is a shameful display of our power. For hundreds of years, African Americans and their allies stood up and fought back against racism, segregation, and bigotry. We have been woke from the dream, the beautiful dream, 
of having our first black president only to find ourselves entering into a new era of mass incarceration and police brutality that we call the new Jim Crow. People like Michael Brown, Sandra Bland, and my father, Eric Garner, and the list goes on and on. This campaign is listening to our brothers and sisters in the Latino community. Todos sabemos que el sistema no está funcionando en este país. No está funcionando para ninguno de nosotros. And the money that's made from the rigged economy is paying for the political campaigns. And they say they're going to fix things. Wake up, America. How are they going to fix a broken system when they are profiting from a broken system? What this campaign is about is telling Wall Street and the billionaire class they cannot they will not have it all. We want a government that represents all of us, not wealthy campaign contributors. Since the recession of 2008, we have seen the erosion of the black middle class get worse. We've not just lost our jobs, but we've lost the homes that we work so hard to build. So whether it's the fight for $15 an hour or for affordable housing, the policies that the next president enacts will either set us on a course towards poverty or prosperity. People should not have to work two or three jobs just to get by. And then after all of that, 58% of all new income goes to the top 1%. That's wrong. We live in the greatest country in the world, and yet so many of our citizens can't get an education. And if they do, they end up paying their student loans for the rest of their lives. Education is a right, not a privilege. Instead of schools, they build prisons for profits and fill them to the brim with more people than any other society in history. We must disrupt the school to prison pipeline, reform our criminal justice system. The time is now. I'm from Scotland, right? It's not a particularly rich country. It's not nearly as wealthy as the United States of America, for example. Yet, everyone has access to free education and health care. Why do we have that in America? We should not be punishing people for getting an education. And instead of giving tax breaks to billionaires or fighting wars, we should not be fighting. We're going to be investing in housing and education and health care. This election is not a popularity contest. It's not about who you like or who you want to go have a beer with. It's about our future. It's about our children. What this campaign is about is creating a political revolution. From Strong Island to Staten Island, Queens to the Boogie Down, BK, Manhattan. We need you New Yorkers. Don't be just liking this online. You got to get in line. It's time to vote, show up, represent. At this crucial moment in American history, we need my brother Bernie because he's a man of integrity, honesty, dignity, and courage. And he's got a vision that focuses on everyday people. Real change takes place when millions of people look around them and they say, you know what? The status quo is unacceptable. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity. Do or did and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Hey, Bernie from Brooklyn, talk to the people! To paraphrase Abraham Lincoln at Gettysburg, this is a campaign of the people! by the people and for the people. I'm Bernie Sanders and I approve this message. Do Washington politicians side with polluters over families? They sure do because big oil pumps millions into their campaigns. Bernie Sanders is the only candidate for president who opposes fracking everywhere. Why? Because fracking pumps dangerous, cancer-causing chemicals into the ground and threatens our drinking water. Bernie, he can't be bought by them because he's funded by you. I'm Bernie Sanders, and I approve this message. My name is Asher Edelman. Asher Edelman 
is most famous for being the real-life stockbroker and corporate raider who inspired the Gordon Gecko character in Oliver Stone's Wall Street. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed is good. But he recently shot to national fame again when he made this public assessment of our economy. But 80% of the Americans have been in a recession for at least 15 years. Seems like nobody realizes we are in one, and certainly nobody realizes we've been in one for 15 years. Who is your nobody? People can buy less for what they have now than they could 15 years ago. In their lives, that's a recession. According to Asher Edelman, trickle-down theory has long been disproven. The wealthy 1% only spend a tiny fraction of their income, while the rest of us in the bottom tier of earners, we spend everything we make. All of it gets spent, and it rotates or has a velocity in the economy and helps the economy grow. The small fraction of what the 1% spend of their income is not going to stimulate the economy significantly. It simply goes mostly into shares or houses or investments that are non-productive. As you've had a transfer of wealth to the top and a transfer of income to the top, you have a shrinking consumer base, basically, and you have a shrinking velocity of money. We're asking everybody, essentially, who you think the best candidate for the economy would be. Bernie Sanders. Without a doubt. Why is that? What no policies? question. Bernie Sanders wants to not only create fiscal stimulation, but get banks to make loans to small businesses again. 170 of our nation's top economists have endorsed Bernie Sanders' plan to reform Wall Street. And President Clinton's former labor secretary has wholeheartedly endorsed Sanders' specific plan to break up the big banks. Bernie is the only candidate in either party who understands and thinks about this conceptually to build roads, to build schools, to, uh, things that got people working again as in the days of Roosevelt. Government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. Rated by most scholars as one of America's top three presidents alongside Washington and Lincoln, Roosevelt's plan was called the New Deal. He pulled us out of our Great Depression with government jobs for the unemployed, economic stimulus plans, and banking reform. And if that sounds familiar, it's because it's really similar to Bernie Sanders' new New Deal. So the next time that you hear me attacked as a socialist, like tomorrow, <laughs> remember this. I don't believe government should take over you know, the grocery store down the street, or own the means of production. But I do believe that the middle class and the working families of this country who produce the wealth of this country deserve a decent standard of living and that their incomes should go up, not down.